Welcome back. This is part three of our beginner's guide to painting a tyrannid. So, in the last video, I left you guys with everything you need to get to this point. All I did off camera between videos was quite simple. I went ahead and I added a few extra details here and there. Touched up a few things. That's all I did. Nothing really in need of filming at least. Now, in this video I'll show you how to add the finishing touches you need to the model in order to make things look as good as they can. We're going to start with the teeth and then do the eyes, then do a few highlights to the red parts, and that'll be all. And here I've adjusted our angle just a little bit to be getting all of the detail we need exposed, exposed. So, I'm going to be using a number one liner brush. It's long and thin. Take a little bit of the color we used in a previous video, Wraith Bone. Get just a little bit onto the tip of the brush. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start picking out teeth. Starting with this back one. I'm going to put the back one right here, and work my way up. Sometimes there are some teeth you won't have to worry about. With how up close I am here, it's not going to be super, super crazy in the way of detail. I'm going to try my best to cover everything as best I can, but... A lot of this is going to be taken care of with a wash, since it's not always the easiest task. Just kind of zoomed in. The camera is. It's going to make the simplest technique look the hardest. And again, just as gently as you can, punch in teeth. They look rough right now because, again, we're at such a obtuse angle here. We're, you know, leaning over a camera with lights around me and a wired microphone strapped into my camera. And, yeah, it's just not that easy of a time. But, I'd say we got that pretty pretty okay. Now, now, we've got a good layout for our teeth. We're going to take a bit of Tamiya flat yellow. We're going to just get a little bit onto the tip of our super sharp brush there, our liner brush. And we're going to just go in here and just put it into the eye. And no, you're never going to get this right the first time you try it. I've been doing this for half a decade, and still, eyes are a difficult thing. Oftentimes, you'll want to skip painting eyes. Focus. There we go. But in the case of this, I don't need to show you how to paint eyes. You're going to want to go in with your base green color in, of course. Fix that best you can after it dries. That's not how you generally want to leave the eyes of your model looking. Of course not. So, now that that part's done, we're going to go ahead and just start adding highlights to the red. And we're going to clean up a little bit of overspill there around the eyes. Since, again, you'll never ever, no matter how long you've been painting, not overspill a little bit when you're painting eyes that are such a sunken in and minute detail. Now, we just might go in and 
punch in some extra details on the gray, but we may not have to. Depends on how it looks. I'm going to for the benefit of myself as a painter, but if you as a newcomer would like to skip that, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. So, to highlight the red, we're going to use Evil Sun's Scarlet. The reason why is because it's a nice contrasting color to the dark red we've already used. So, first things first, we're going to, using that same thin liner brush, we're going to go in and just add some highlights here and there to the model. Get just a little bit onto the tip of this liner brush. This is really how you want to do this. Just make sure it's just on the tip of the brush. Wipe off any excess you see as you go onto the edges of some things. You may not need to do this for everything, but I'm doing it just because I want sharp angles. So, just gently go in here and just add it. So maybe there's like along here where there's lines and ridges. A little bit here. What you're doing really is just trying to draw attention to certain parts of detail on the model. I'm just going to drag a little bit along here. Okay. We're going to do a little bit here on the tongue. The tongue has a nice sharp edge to it anyway, so we can... Very gently just rub the edge of the brush across these sharper angles of the tongue. And that'll do our highlighting for us. So reason why investing in a liner brush is a good idea since liner brushes have a sharp but still nice tip to allow you to be able to get into little tight areas like this and just freehand in certain things. For me that's doing the edge highlights here and normally I would do this off camera because it's a very tedious thing and believe it or not doing minute details like this on a camera are not the easiest thing in the world. They're actually quite quite stressful without a camera being pointed at you even more stressful with a camera being pointed at you. Yeah, because these can make or break a model. So it's never the easiest task in the world when you've got equipment. But a little bit of patience, it's an easy task. You don't have to hit everything, obviously. I mean, I'm not trying to hit every detail. Some of these parts are just too small to even highlight. So we're going to just hit areas we know we're going to have to continually focus on. Like some of these bigger open areas here. Within here, a little bit here. All we're really trying to do is just draw attention to certain parts of the red. A little bit up here, this little area I call it little back turtles because they look like little turtles. And a little bit up here. And again, that's one of the nice things of really sitting down and experimenting with your army is you can find what works for you. If you were sitting here and you think that this color is a little too bright, well, you can always darken it a little bit. None of this is an exact science. It doesn't have to be an exact science. None of this is an exact science. If it was, then people like me who do tutorials would be out of a job. And again, Right here on this knee, we're only trying to highlight a few areas. 
That's something that I think almost confuses newcomers. You don't need to highlight the entire part of the model. Only highlight enough to bring attention to the area. Since these models are most likely going to be viewed from the back and the side, those are the areas you really need to focus on the most, are the back and the side. I'm going to rinse my brush a little bit between layers since there are times when you can feel your brush starting to get a little stiff. I'm going to come on over here to the other side and do the same thing. Get this little tip of the sword here. Get all these little ridges here. Essentially what you're doing is because you're using such a thin, sharp brush, you're able to actually go in and hit just these little sharp details here. If you're going to be starting as a beginner, I will make a comprehensive guide on which brushes you should be using as a beginner. They're pretty straightforward. You don't need a ton. Yeah, it never hurts to have a lot of brushes, to have a lot of variety in your toolbox. You know, that's never a bad thing with any hobby or job or trade. To have all the tools you could ever need. But there are also times when you're not going to use half these tools you have here. You know, I don't see the need of going out and spending a lot of money on painting supplies if it's something I don't need or it's a gimmicky tool. Like, you know, these painting handles are something I would recommend buying if you're a newcomer, mostly because they actually do as advertised. Now... There are cheaper and better alternatives to these wooden handle to these handles, and one of them is a wooden block that you cut down to three to four inch shapes that you then use as a handle. Wine corks also make a very nice plinth. Which is the clinical term for it. You don't have to call it a plinth. You can call it a painting handle, and people are going to know exactly what you're talking about when you say painting handle. No one's going to get really anal about what that's going to be called. I mean, that's one of those things that pretty much changes depending on the hobbyist. I'm just going to put a little bit of scarlet here as well, just to brighten up that little detail. And again, you ain't going to be perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect in this video. I'm just trying to get paint on the model. Now I get this tiered in table ready. Okay. A few areas we're going to go in touch obviously like these little spots you know, in the hands we're going to just add a couple little details to a little bit here we're going to add top of the hand also this helps you know with contrast and again we're going to fix up what we did over spill on the eye which is not too hard to fix we're just going to take one of our darker base colors. In this case, we're going to take Death World Forest since it's the most logical sense. And we're going to take and just get a little bit onto the edge of this brush. And we're going to just right here in the little overspill we got on 
in the eye. I'm gonna just put a little bit there. Put a little bit here. And that dry, she'll never be able to tell the difference. One nice thing about tyranids is they don't have pupils. So, it's not like you're going to be able to tell much. And we're going to add a quick sepia wash to the teeth, obviously. And then we're going to start highlighting parts of the gray. And then I'll explain what to do for basing. And that'll do it. So, I'm going to be using a standard neutral gray color. This can be done with any traditional gray color. Games Workshop makes a nice one that I forget the name of now. If I remember, I'll put it in the video. But nice neutral gray tone. So we're going to do all of our highlighting with the gray. And we're going to just, you might see my arm in shot. I'm getting paint off my wet palette. All right, same as before. Our thin liner brush. Got to keep it nice and simple. Take the edge of the brush up against the crisp edge of the sword and just rub it onto the edge like so. Following all the contours of the blade, basically. The best way to explain edge highlighting. Honestly, edge highlighting is not that hard. It's just one of the most tedious tasks. Because it's very easy to mess up. And it's also very easy to overdo as well. There will come times when people will rely solely on edge highlighting and not on any other form of highlighting a model. Which is understandable. If that's all you know how to do, then that's what you're probably going to go with is just edge highlighting a model. Which, if that's all you can do, that's fine. That's understandable. But... Don't be afraid to branch out and learn new skills, especially when it comes to highlighting your models, because then you can really take advantage of some things. All right, and all I'm really doing here is I'm just connecting these highlights together. We'll go in and we'll clean up a little bit of this, too, with the base color originally. Really, that's all your highlighting consists of, is going across the edge of something with another color, a little bit lighter fixing up overspill with your base color again just continuing that process for however long it takes now there are some parts of this video I'm probably going to speed up or do off camera since I'm sure you guys don't need to sit here and meticulously see me edge highlight every single part of this model. I'm going to of course capture a nice chunk of it on camera since that's the point of this video series, but after seeing the analytics of the last video, yeah, I'm not sure. You guys really want a almost hour video of just a guy sitting here talking about painting. Always got to keep people entertained. That's the thing. While this platform is very educational and instruction based, it's also an entertainment platform. And that's something that sometimes is hard to keep in mind for us painters that you're not sitting through a course or a class on something like Coursera or really anything that teaches classes. 
wouldn't matter if it was a 45 minute to an hour long session of just rambling on. It wouldn't matter. But considering that this is still an entertainment platform, many folks don't find the idea of rambling about paint to be really entertaining. There are a few other things, too, I would like to branch out and do on this channel at one point, but we're going to cross that bridge when we get to it. It's nothing that can be done soon. Something I would like to do once we get a little more of a viewer base. A consistent viewer base. Consistent subscriber base. Something I would like to do is like a weekly series that would require very little editing from me and very little time from you guys. I think of it almost like a documentary series I would like to start where I talk about the origins of our hobby and the origin of scale modeling and how those two go hand in hand despite neither side of the hobby liking to admit that these two parts of the hobby go hand in hand with each other because they do it's not too not too hard though right here where we overspilled again we'll go in and we'll just get a little bit of our base color and call it a day. All right. Now we'll move on to the main weapon. Might seem a little rough, but trying to block in a shape is what we're trying to do. Because we'll go in, we'll just add a little more to it is what we're essentially doing. Because remember, all your highlights are supposed to be are to bring attention to parts of the weapon. That's why this will be such a simple thing to do. Because it doesn't take much to highlight this. I highlighted what was mostly front and center. And that's it. That's all you have to do today to highlight. Highlight what's front and center, the most exposed part, and that's all. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of our base color. I'm going to touch up some of these areas that we did get a little bit of overspill on. A little bit here. A little bit here. And again, don't repaint over your entire blade if you mess up. If you mess up, just go over the area you overspilled on, which will happen. You will overspill a lot. I've overspilled a lot. It happens. It's not the end of the world. Especially happens when you least want it to happen. For me, that's when I'm, you know, on camera. But, yeah, for you it'll probably be when you're trying to get through something and you're trying to actually make progress and headway, you'll probably wind up overspilling stuff on a model. I'm going to go grab a wash for our base. And I'm going to go grab our basing material, and I'll be right back. All right, so generally teeth are made of the same thing as most carapaces or bone would be made of. So we're going to use the same thing we did to shade the carapace. Seraphim sepia. 
And we're just going to take a little bit of that onto our liner brush. And we're going to just go into the teeth here. And we're going to just do enough of a wash to really fill in the gaps between the teeth here. Especially these front teeth that look very buck to me. But, yeah. Wraith Bone's a good color for something like teeth. Wraith Bone's not that great of a color for painting large areas, though, since Wraith Bone's very, um, very white. It's a very white bone color. You know, like bone doesn't age that way. So, there's the wash on the teeth finished. And now we're going to explain the basic of basing. This is the last part you're going to need to know as a beginner. This is what can make or break your model as well. And it's also probably one of the most important things to do with your model. So what you're going to want is something that's basic. Something that can look great across an entire army, no matter the army and no matter the size of the army. For me, that is Army Painter's Coarse Ground Battlefield Terrain. I've just got this in a little bitty crocker container, but I mean, this is, yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's just shredded up cork for the most part. But it's the easiest and simplest way to get a nice looking battlefield without having to worry about anything tedious. This thick model glue that I'm going to be using, this is basically just Elmer's glue. It is Homer's glue, exactly, but I don't need to bore you with showing actual Elmer's glue when this does the trick. It's the same thing. I'm just doing this for convenience sake and because it was the closest thing to me within arm's reach. So, open the lid or take the cap off your Elmer's glue, either one, and just squeeze a bit onto the base. I'm going to open this up just a smidgen more, so bear with me with background noise. This is the downside of certain glues, is they will clog. It's because you're really using a adhesive property. So, now that that's taken care of for the most part. We've removed that flashing everything. Just apply liberally. I mean, apply some good sized gobs here. Apply a good sized gob here. A really nice size one here. And apply a really nice size one back here. I'm just thinking, that's a lot of glue. Well, it is a lot of glue, but that's because that's where our next tool comes into play. Now, you can use either a knackered brush, a sculpting tool if you have some, a broken drill bit, really the handle of a brush, anything. I'm using a Citadel texture tool, but that's because it's what I have close. Because again, it's within, our, it's within arm's reach. I don't really want to have to dig for tools while I'm on camera. So, and again, what you're doing is you're having enough glue on this base to just spread everything out in a nice but still smooth way obviously I mean you don't want to have a ton of glue all over the place but this if you think all oh, this is a white glue it's awfully bright it's going to dry clear don't worry about it so just again, work the glue throughout the whole base pushing parts of it around pulling parts of it around and getting a relatively even, but still pretty liberal 
coating of glue on the entire base. Again, that's why we have all these nice sized dollops of glue all over the place. Now, don't do something silly. Don't just take and start throwing the textured coarse compound on here. Don't do that because that will just look weird because it won't go on right. It won't set right. What you want to do is this. You might get a little messy here, but grab your model firmly by the rim of the base, lift it out of the paint stand, hold it firmly by the sharpest point of the model you can get. Set it on your desk. Open your texture. Let me adjust the camera. And this is it. Just take your model, hold it by part of the weapon or part of the base. And if the model can fit in there, cool. Since this chap can't, we're going to just start sprinkling this on here. If he didn't have a tail, he would probably be able to fit pretty good. Do it over the container. Because if you don't, you'll be making a mess. I'm still making a mess, even though I'm doing it over the container. But you definitely don't want to make a mess all over your workspace. And just tamp down some of it with your finger. Shake off the excess. Just look around for bare spots. Put it in, tamp some down. Put a little in there, tamp some down. Put a little there, tamp some down. Shake off your excess. And then close up your container that you don't want that spilling all over the place. And one of the probably most versatile things you can get as a painter, whether you're a veteran or a newcomer to the hobby, are tufts, are grass tufts. Army Painter makes a variety of them. I'm using the Deadland tufts. This is what they look like. I've used a couple of them already. They're nice to have. You can get 77 tufts for about eight bucks. And it really does spice up the base quite a bit. So, again, same as before. You can use super glue. I prefer using the same glue I did for my base since it makes things a little bit nicer looking. Lay your tufts out. Get yourself a pair of tweezers. You don't have to use tweezers, but I am for convenience sake. Get a large tuft. They are pre-adhesived, but take my advice, that adhesive is usually sucky adhesive. So, whatever the glue of your choice is, find a nice spot for it. I'm thinking right there is a good spot. Okay. And let that dry. That glue will dry to a clear finish. If you think you want to add another tuft somewhere, do it usually on the opposite or horizontal end of the model. I think I'm going to add another one just to be safe. I think I'm going to go to another large one just because those large ones are nice and they fill out an area well. So just get another large one. A little more glue. A little dab of glue. And right there it goes. All right. And then once the glue is dry and complete, just take a black paint of your choice and go around the base rim with a smooth and even coat of black. And that's your final model. Before I leave you, I'm going to show you the final model. This is how you should look. I'll post a couple of photos at the end. I hope I was able to help some of you out here, and I hope I was able to inspire a few of you to paint your armies a very quick and simple way. Thank you. Please come back for the next video, 
And if you have any thoughts or any ideas we could do for our next video, let me know.